na chine ke na ke promi he nina go nyo bo na nia na zopota o nyo bo na nia bo opu ya nina bu ye na amen anyi we na ase eze ku pete nkosi na no tuto na ejama na nsopuru site na edige bi maru na edige ise 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 You begin to cry for yourself when you find yourself in the contract called Nigeria. You begin to cry for yourself. How managed? How did you find yourself in that company called Nigeria? It is sad. You see the criminality that is happening. When they came to make their prescription, you see how they made their prescription. They prescribed a particular a particular criminal group, Yambanga and Yantanda. Mention they are the people that. But when you see them, they begin to in their conventional media. Go to conventional media. What you be hearing in their media is that they prescribe bandits. They prescribe bandits. They, which bandits? People they prescribe. We are Yambindig and Yantanda. The major bandits who are the killers who shot down the private jet. The Fulani bandits who are killing who have just killed people in Enugu State. Who have just killed uh, people in Enugu State a few days ago. We are not prescribed. The main bandits who are killing people in Benue State. Who are killing people in Kaduna? Who are white people in who are white life in Benue State have not been prescribed. That is why Benue State Governor came out and was crying and say, Why won't you prescribe these people? If you want to prescribe, prescribe Mate Allah, who is providing you, who is providing the cover and sponsoring. And you hear that idiot that was defending them say that when you prescribe them, it will make governments to go after their sponsors. The sponsors of Boko Haram we are mentioned by the man that just spoke. I played his video. He investigated the man. And he said today that sponsor is in Asorok. He's part of the presidency, working with them. And this is when you see all these things, when you see all these facts, after seeing all these facts, Nigerians are still close, they are still closing their eyes. You still see Nigerians supporting evil. You saw you seen it, you see the people they prescribe. Did you hear it from a lawyer? Did you hear it from Ozokome? Sam Ozokome have said it that even Boko Haram name. Boko Haram is not, is not prescribed in Nigeria. Boko Haram is not gazetted in Nigeria as a terrorist group. You saw a son, Ozakome, say it. I want to play it again. Watch this video carefully from beginning to end. Then you will know the game the front that you are playing. This is the game. They are playing with your life and they will continue to do it if you do not wake up. Share this video to all platforms. Share this video to your family and friends. Share it in any group you belong. Let people hear the evil that these people are doing. I told you that in 2022, deception will increase, blackmail will increase, confusion will increase, diversion will increase. This is what they are doing. You have seen what they are doing. Watch the video again closely and see the evil. This so called gender we are performing in the so called one Nigeria they are talking about. Watch. Federal government through the Attorney General of the Federation eventually got a court order in November 2022 proscribing various armed groups the specific mention of Yam Bindiga and Yantanda as terrorist organizations. As one to this, an official gazette was issued by the federal government in line with the Terrorism Prevention Act 2013. But what is the legal implication of the new designation of bandits as terrorists? But when you get them proscribed, one benefit that the government has is that you engage them in combat as though they have been convicted. That's the advantage, although they have been convicted. So you kill them and apply all the force that is needed. And then principally, again, the terrorism financing. Now, you see anytime a group is proscribed as a terrorist organization, there will be a cycle that the central bank will issue to all banks in Nigeria. That if there is any account existing or in operation, that it carries a name similar to the names of those organizations that they should make a report to the CBI. Even though Justice Taiwo Taiwo of the Federal High Court had in a ruling held that the activities of Yam Bindiga and Yatanda bandit groups and other similar groups in Nigeria constitute an act of terrorism, why has the very dreaded Boko Haram not been mentioned in all these? Boko Haram, the tormentor in chief of Nigerians has not been declared specifically as a terrorist group. Meanwhile, it is one of the four deadliest terrorist groups in the world, the Boko Haram group. A group like Mieti Allah that comes out openly to beat his chest and own up to killings 
in different parts of the country by saying we did it should be declared a terrorist group. Well, uh, Boko Haram is actually an extension of the, there is a name they are, they are known for. That is the name that was proscribed as a tourism, ter terrorist organization, not the name Boko Haram. Now, why uh, Mieti Allah could not be proscribed is because Mieti Allah does not exist as a terrorist organization. It is an association classified for the purpose of economic interest. The Gazette also provides the members of the proscribed groups. Now you see the line. The line is much more clearer than ever. You see their lies, much more clearer than ever. You see they even use people who claim to be educated to defend their evil act. A lawyer defending the fact that Boko Haram was not proscribed. He said they used another name. Which other name do you know Boko Haram for? Boko Haram, everywhere, all over the world, is known as Boko Haram. That is what they are known for. And look at somebody trying to confuse you, to tell you there's another name that they are being known for. And that name was the name that was proscribed, not Boko Haram. These are the kind of evil we found ourselves in. You see the reason why you have to stand up and fight for the man, the only man whom they will hear his voice and they will lose sleep. I was supposed to be in the camp. It is only Mazen Nandekano, they will hear his name and they will lose sleep. And today, when we are asking and say, stand up and ask for the unconditional release of Mazen Nandekano, through civil disobedience, sit at home on Sunday and on Monday. This is the only thing that can free Mazen Nandekano, nothing else, nothing. The political solution they are talking about, it is our civil disobedience that we activate that very thing to happen. If you want Mazen Nandekano to be released through political solution, you will continue to embark on a massive civil disobedience that have never been seen before, including economic sabotage to that very contract of God, Nigeria, in southeastern part of Nigeria, in Biafra land, not only south, in Biafra land. When I say southeast, I mean the old southeastern region. The old southeastern region, the whole region have to make sure that they embark on economic sabotage against the ginger weed because it is our wealth that are using against us. They are using against us. Every revenue you are giving to the ginger weed from Biafra land, stop giving them your revenue. That is the way you can move their hand to reach Mazen Nanikano. They will call you for political discussion. They will be the one to beg for it. They are supposed to be, they will be the one. When we start doing the thing we are supposed to do, when we start doing the right thing, as Mazen Nanikano is preparing to go to court on 18, 19, and 20, if we start now, not tomorrow, start now doing the right thing, sit at home on Sunday and Monday, do it like never before. Do it like never before. Hold back every of your revenue, every avenue that are taking money from the southeastern region, from the old southeastern region. Destroy it and make sure that they do not take those revenue anymore. Economic sabotage in Biafra. If anybody is telling you that what you are doing, you are doing against yourself. You are doing it for yourself and for your born children to free yourself, not against yourself. You are doing it to free yourself. And anything we are doing in Biafra land is affecting the ginger weed. Every single thing you are doing in Biafra is affecting the danger with 101% is affecting them. They can't escape it. That is why they always complain. And when we put, the, when we put all those politicians on the hot seat, they will not have a hiding place. They have no choice. They will be running to Abuja. And for you to tell, let me tell you, this, these politicians are a bunch of criminals. They, there are no reason you must believe these people. Bunch of criminals. You see, I told you that this year that we are in is, remember, 2022, a lot of things are going to unfold. If need be, the Fulanese are going to wage an open war. Our brother, Obudaya Melafia, made that revelation. Don't forget. May his soul rest in peace. Our brother, they killed from middle bed, Obudaya Melafia, he made that revelation that if care is not taken, that in 2022, that the Fulanese are going to unleash war to the indigenous people. Those are the things we are expecting. That is why every Biafran, everybody from the southeastern region have to open their eye. Every indigenous side have to open their eye. Begin to do something now before it is too late. The greatest warrior who we have, the greatest warrior we have, who have put a stop to the movement of the ginger weed, who have put a stop to the plant of the ginger weed, is our Sunna Mazen and the camp. Take it or leave it. It is because of him. That is why you have not yet been fallenized. That is why yet you have not yet been Islamized. We have to begin to act now before it is too late. Start acting now before it is too late. These people who you call yourself politicians, they are a bunch of criminals and deceivers.
We are in a year, remember, this is an electionary year, a year of election when they will start their campaign and their lies. And they are preparing. They are preparing to dish out their lies. You saw some other group. I saw some other, another video I'm going to play with for you. Those people whom you are expecting to fight for you, even when they see before their own very eyes that the ginger weed is against them, they know very well that when they talk about presidency of Igbo, Igbo extraction, that Igbo president, that Igbo president is a scam and a lie from the pit of hell. Do not support any Igbo presidency. If you happen to get an Igbo man as a president in Nigeria, the Igbos will suffer much more than ever. The Igbos will be killed much more than ever. If you doubt it, wait for it. If you doubt it, wait for it. If you have any president from Igbo extraction, that is when Biafrans will be killed more than ever. They will be killed more than ever. Because these people who are in politics in Biafra land, who call themselves Igbos, they are all criminals, killers, murderers. That is what they are. They are just the center with hope. Them. Every single person you see, they are going to project to go for presidency. If at all they will do it, which I know, they will never do it. Any person they will present will be a criminal, a killer. And the person will kill much more than ever. You saw when Obasanjo was there. Obasanjo killed members of his own group. Obasanjo killed OPC. He killed Odrua people when he was there. He went to Udi and massacred people. Even though he's from the South. He is a Odrua man. He killed his own people to satisfy the caliphate. Today, even the caliphate cannot even be able to kill their own bandits. Their own criminals, they are sparing them. They are sparing them. But when it comes to our own side, we will kill our own people. Do not pray for anything that has to do with the Igbo presidency. It is a scam. And some of them know about it. They know. They know that it's a scam. Some of them know, even from the beginning, they know, but they continue to pretend because of their selfish interest. I want to play for you a video of the recent meeting they are holding about their so-called nonsense they are talking about. You will hear them. After hearing everything they say, listen carefully to this video I'm going to play. Listen carefully and hear what they're saying. At the end of it, you will see the difference between them and us. We don't just talk. We talk and we act. Mazin Nandekan doesn't just make noise. Mazin Nandekan have provided a solution. The only solution is to break that country. He's not calling for war. He is calling for self-determination. A referendum. Introduce a referendum. A referendum to free the people. The only thing that Nigeria needs now is a referendum and nothing else. Not election. The only thing that Nigeria needs is referendum and not election. But some people, even the politicians in the south of Nigeria, they are still deceiving themselves. Still deceiving themselves. Watch this video carefully from the to end, and then we'll continue. I know some people, some politicians, are trying to zone chairman to Ibo and vice president to Ibo Land. We reject that. That kind of leadership we reject. <laughs> Any woman who's going to accept vice president is on his own. Yes, sir. And we'll have a voting for we it's our time to make Nigeria better. We supported the, the appeal, he won the election, we support him being the president. But some people don't want that. And then Obasanjo was used to compensate the other people. After that, then you have Omar Deep. After that, then they wanted to go to the north because they want power to rotate. So power will rotate. Then because they did not feel that they were being cheated, so if Maradua or power was handed to him, he died in the office, they just put the Lord General and took over. And he, he wasn't allowed to finish his second term, but he served. So the South South have served. Yes. All the evil people have not served. This is also a very position. Our position, first and foremost, in alignment with the position of the Southern Leaders and Little Bed Forum, is that Nigeria must be restructured. <laughs> Between now and 2023 election, let me take you a little bit into this constitution to know how fraudulent it is. If you pick Kano 44, you pick Jigawa 27, and you have uh, Kasina 34, you have a total of 105 local governments. We have had the entire board South East has 95. There is no way you will go into any election. So the election is rigged out of issue. Yes. These are some of the issues we should deal with. As I am today, you hear people come from the Southwest. They want to be president. Even the North, which we have said, They've had enough for now. 
They want to be president. I've not seen men of Southeast extraction come out and say, I want to be president. Mm. Yeah. It is, is not it. a matter of paper. Yeah. It is not a matter of reeling out That's statistics. It is a question of, let us see these men and we match them. There is no region in Nigeria that has intervened in the politics of Nigeria than, than the Igbo. In Nigeria, they have no equal in nationalism. The six geopolitical zones that we are all celebrating today was the very hand of a poem. Each time anybody listens to Emeka Ayoku, I don't know where the old man gets his voice from, you will know that these are Nigerians of first class status. Mm. We are the men of our own generation. Mm. And the other time that the, the governors involved, we have, you don't see them. Instead, they compromise their, they compromise their position, mm -hmm. and they come on now blaming those who have evolved the system of defending themselves. Southern presidency is a means to an end. It is not something that we should celebrate because even if you have a southern president, you cannot have a southern president more powerful than Obasanjo. Nothing is being done. It, the fundamental thing is the restructuring. But in the meantime, let those who have not tested it, let them have it. Upon Niger Delta Forum, we stand for power sheet to Southern Nigeria. We were discussing with uh, the, the Secretary General of Africa, and we said uh, power could be gotten by negotiation, power could be gotten by force, by the use of force. And power will also be lost by deception. We have been deceived before. People have gotten into power by deception. We have negotiated power before. And um, in 2015, we saw an element of force. You must negotiate, if possible, deceive those you need to deceive. <laughs> Where you need to use force, use force. And please reach out to all Nigerians. Come to South Sudan, go to Southwest, go to the North, go to the Middle Belt, and discuss with us. Deceive those you need to deceive. Use force where you need to use force. Because the truth is that there are sentiments. The sentiment of South South Nigeria is that we had four years that were truncated. And so we need to complete the remaining four years. That sentiment is strong. And it cannot be ignored. So which, if we have to forego that sentiment and support your represent, what is it for us? These are conversations that we should begin to develop and have. As we are in the middle of we don't trust. You have had them. All these people that have come together are a bunch of clueless people, clueless men. These people are a bunch of clueless men. All the people that you see there involved, on the ground, in ordinary people, they are united. The ordinary people from every southern part of Nigeria, they are united in one voice, asking for referendum. The ordinary people in the southern region are asking for referendum. The Odudua people, the Biafran people, the Middle Bertans, they are asking for it. But look at their representative. People who are representing you and I, look at who claim to be representing you and I, look at what they are doing. They are fighting for presidency. They are even confused. They are even confused. A man rose up there and he was saying there will be no election in 2023 except there is a restructuring. In that same meeting, somebody is still there planning about 2023, telling us to telling them to go and convince people. If, if you need convincing, convince if you need force, force. How can you be saying so many things at the same time? This is how confused they are. This is why you must not believe these people for one minute. Don't trust them and don't believe them. They are a bunch of liars, lie from the pit of hell. The ordinary people who they claim to represent are asking for referendum. Let the world hear it and hear it clear. What the ordinary people need in Nigeria, every indigenous tribe in Nigeria, they are crying for self-determination. That is what they are crying for from all angles. And Mazen Nandekano, who is leading that charge, Mazen Nandekano started the message, preach to Biafrans. Biafrans got the message. The Odura brothers got the message. The Middle Bethans got the message. Every indigenous tribe got the message, and they are asking for referendum, allow them to decide their fate. 
But these imposters, these wicked barons, they have refused. These cabals have refused to allow people to have their way. Look at their gathering. When you watch them, when you watch them and hear them one by one, you will know that we really need freedom. We need to free ourselves. We need to free. And they themselves know. They themselves know that we are in captivity in the hand of the caliphate. But the way they are going about it, that is different thing. They are just talking and they are pursuing their personal interests. Meanwhile, we the masses, we are pursuing a collective interest. That is different. Mazin Nandukano is pursuing a collective interest of every single Biafran, everybody living in the old southern region, the south, south, and the southeast, and the lower Benue. That is the different. That is the obvious different. But these people are pursuing personal interests as you are seeing them today. You see them? There is none of them that will go for presidency. If any one of them is being called for vice president today, he will drop that meeting. If any one of them is invited for vice presidency, he will invite that meeting. And that is why Buhari don't care about what they say. Buhari don't care about this kind of noise making. I want you to listen to what Buhari said because Buhari don't care. He knows who they are. That after making noise, they will go back home. Listen to what Buhari said when he was interviewed. The indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, could be a touchy one. And Igbo elders will be looking forward to an update on their meeting with the president. Yes, your black country, when you, had, when you ran for office, the many times you offered yourself. Um, when you think and, and look at where Nigeria is and the way forward, do you fear for this country? Do you fear for our oneness and our unity? No, I don't. I don't because, to be frank with you, from 15th January 1966, I have been in all the trouble in this country, including being in detention for more than three years. I, I think um, Nigerians, they make noise, I think, to get a better deal, but they know that we are better together than separate. I sincerely believe in that. They are just, yeah, they just make noise so that they can get better deals. One conversation that has refused to... Did you hear it? Did you hear what Buhari said? That they are noise makers. They make noise in order to get a better deal. That is why he doesn't care what they are saying. You see, as they gather there, he knows very well that if he call any of them for appointment, they will drop that meeting. And that is the difference between them and our Sudan Mazen and Kano. Our Sudan Mazen and Kano, even in captivity, even at the point of death, they have told him to drop the Afra struggle. He said, no, I'm not going to leave my people. Mazen and Kano said, even if he should take his own life to make sure that every one of us is free, that he's willing to pay the price. That is the difference between them and Mazen and Kano. Mazen and Kano never relaxed. That is why you have, let me tell you, if you are human, if you are human and you're sensible, if you are human and you value your own life and the life of your body, you should be acting. Anything you are told me to do to make sure that Mazin Nankano is free, you will do that. You don't need to wait for somebody to beg you. Anything that you are being told to do to make sure that Mazin Nankano is being released, you have to do it without looking back. Because he is the only man that they will hear his voice. Once they hear his voice, they will shiver. If he's outside, Astro will be shaking. They have no choice that to listen to him. That is why we are calling for the massive civil disobedience at any place you are. Sit at home on Sunday and on Monday. If you have not started, begin to prepare yourself. Begin to warm up. Sit at home on Sunday and on Monday. Compulsory sit at home on Sunday and on Monday. Before the coming of court of Mazen and the Kano. Don't wait until the court day. You say you're sitting. The sit at home you do on the court day doesn't have any effect. That you are sitting at home on a court day is a holiday for yourself, not for Mazen and the Kano. If you want to do a sit at home that will affect the case of Mazen and the Kano, you're supposed to start it today. You're supposed to start it today. Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Monday, and every other day. And again, embark on economic sabotage of that very section of the country. Economic sabotage to make them know that Mazen Nandekano is the only man that is valued in the southeastern part of Nigeria. The only man that the masses hear his voice. The world will know about it. Even the ginger will know, but they want to play it down. And we cannot allow them. That is why we are calling for massive civil disobedience. They want to press Mazen Nandekano's voice down. They want to make people believe that people no longer follow Mazen Nandekano. But it is a lie. We will not allow them.
this is why you have to wake up and continue to embark on a massive civil disobedience. No matter how they try, no matter the weapon they bring, no matter their propaganda and their lies, we will continue to punch them what to what. Let us listen more on that meeting that we're holding. That meeting was Afeni Fere, Ohanez Ndibu, Pandef, and the Middle Bet. They were holding that meeting on behalf of their people. As we are calling every Middle Bet and calling every Southern to join, that is the same thing they are doing, but they are doing their own in a wrong way. Those are politicians. We are not politicians, we are freedom fighters, and we are world, we pursue our world. Don't just say it. That is the difference between us and them. Listen to the last part of that very meeting. Um, as we are in the middle of we don't trust our northern brothers anymore. Anybody <laughs> who loves Nigeria will not want another president from the north. Yes. Especially of the Islamic <laughs> Because the same thing might continue. Why is Nigeria where it is today? It is because people are playing with the religion for the sake of power. So don't be deceived. You have to work for it. Yes, we'll voice out to support you, but you have to do the right thing. You have to know what is going on. If you they say hey, they have militarized the South East, blah 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 blah. Yes, is to ensure that you don't your votes don't count. To ensure that even when the whole South is vote, there will be just one or two million. Open your eyes well, well. That is what uh, the Nigeria means. Shine your eyes well, well. Don't allow them to cheat you, to continue to cheat you. I will raise my case and advise your brothers. Everybody should have a PPP vision. And let's ensure that votes come and we raise power from this people. Thank you. In, in, in our meeting at Abuja Dialogue, we all agreed that the presidency should go to the south. The middle bell has not tested the presidency or the rise, but I wouldn't say it should be given to us. Except if the people don't come out then. Already a team man, Moses, a young chief, Moses, a young, has already come up. Because we've been waiting for the people and they're not coming up. They're not speaking one language. So please, I'm advising you, as we leave this place, by the next two, three days, I want to see that two, three, four Igbos are aspiring to be the president of this great country. Thank you very much and God bless all of you. It is difficult to walk with the Igbos when it has to do with 2023. Mm -hmm. Do you know, nobody has taught me more than them. I was telling you something on the phone, that this is the last event I have to do for them. Mm -hmm. After this event, if I don't see signs, I quit their stage. You know why? Mm -mm. Like you said, if you are waiting for them, they refuse to come out and refuse to come up. Let me tell you what happens. Play, 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 play. The northern people, they can play a smart one. Don't joke with them. When it comes to political power, they understand the game. Yeah. Why are we doing this thing to make your life better? If you search them now, they don't have PVCs. All those 18 years to 40 years you talked about, they don't have PVCs. The last BB Niger voting, over one billion of these people voted for people they never met. <laughs> for people they refuse to, they don't even know. They start having WhatsApp group, WhatsApp group, WhatsApp group. Over, Ebuka came out and said, more than one billion votes. And some of these people were paying 30 naira per vote. Not all the votes were free. They were not. Invite these people to come and attend the town hall meeting. First question they will ask you, how much will you pay me? But why is it that you didn't ask white money? At the end of the day, I never I never even talk of white money or whatever, whatever it is. But if I call white money now, he will say sir, he will come here. You voted for him, can you reach him? You just foolishly elevated a man who would end up not even recognizing you. But instead of you to give the same tenacity, same attention to something that can change.
That is the reason why I say, find there. You can't go and look for that job. They will have sex with you because you deserve it. That's the right. reason is because yeah. you have the power to chase them out. You can never, you will not want to chase them out. <coughs> Am I communicating? Yeah. The 40 million ballots movement is for young people who want to make a change. They ask you now from Anambra, what is the name of your governor now? Governor elect, a lot of you don't know him. Uh, so, what is the first name? They don't know. You ask these same people in, 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 the, in the music table in America, tell me the first five. They will say it even in their dreams. <laughs> Who has done all these things to you? The power to recreate your destiny lies in your hands. That's the reason why we want to do 40 million ballot movement for the young people. Don't oh, mind these idiots. This is how they continue to peddle their lies and talk rubbish, talking trash. This idiot, bunch of idiots, they are Confucianists. In the same meeting where somebody is saying that if there is no restructuring, there will be no election. In that same meeting, look at what somebody is planning. You are planning to elevate, elevate a, a president. The Biafran people do not want a president. They don't want any presidency. That is not what Biafrans are asking for. Biafrans want their freedom. They want referendum. I don't know why it is so difficult for these idiots to understand. I don't know why it is so difficult. In Biafra land mainly, you are talking about the Igbo president. Igbos do not want anything that has to do with Igbo president. What they want is Biafra. Igbos don't want president. They want Biafra. They want an independent nation. They want their self-determination to decide their fate. That is the obvious truth. But this bunch of idiots, they will continue to peddle these lies. Confuse themselves. They continue to confuse themselves. They will continue to confuse themselves and at every given opportunity. And you'll be wondering, who are they leading? These are the people who will come at the international stage. They will claim that they are, they, they are representative. Representing who? Representing whom? Who are you representing? And if you think that these people are representing the masses, I want to play for you a video to show you what the masses are saying. After listening to the masses, tell me if these idiots are representing the masses or they are doing what the masses want. Watch. I eventually escaped uh, bandits kidnapping when I traveled last two weeks. Do you think I'm afraid to die again? If we cannot tell our children the truth and the history of this country, then we are afraid hopefully. They know they tell blind man say they the fall. Some and if not most Nigerians have resigned to the inevitability of living through another 14 months of a failed Buhari leadership. After all, we are Nigerians. We can take abuse and keep taking, or so it seems. Person where you no know they see, you know go tell and say people no there for food. Now you go take him more him. Buhari came and closed up the border and said he wanted to build the Nigerian economy. You see, Nigerians have short memory. I could remember when the same Buhari, when he was a, a major general in the army, when he took over Nigeria in 1984. What happened to the Nigerian economy? He said the people that stole Nigerian money, they want to change the color of, of money, of our money. What happened? The Nigerian economy collapsed. But is that actually true? Can we survive Buhari? Can Nigeria and Nigerians survive till 2023 with Buhari as president? Buhari said they should give him three months. He will defeat Boko Haram when he comes in. What happened today? Boko Haram are working, they are working much stronger. They, tomorrow they will say they are technically defeated the Boko Haram. They are, they are physically defeated Boko Haram. Or, you know, they will be speaking all those useless dramas. Did they think we don't go to school? Our death portfolio is skyrocketing daily. And dead bodies are piling up in northern Nigeria. Terrorists have taken over more parts of Nigeria. We should not be deceived. Even you yourself, even you, you people that are interviewing me, you know what you know what the economy is. Uh, is what is after is boring, 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 boring. Tomorrow maybe China, Chinese will come and take over you, take over you people. I said they want to use as a slave. What is happening in Uganda today? Chinese are taking over everything. If Chinese are taking over them for the mining gold. Very soon they will come to our oil, our oil industry. Very soon they will come to the to the wharf, to the only sea, sea port that is working in, in Nigeria, a papa of Lagos. Where the, we, which other sea port that is working? Tell me. There is poor security in the entire country. You cannot even walk from here to Lokoja without being kidnapped, or walk from here to uh, Kaduna without being kidnapped. Likewise, uh, likewise, the southeast. More than a hundred million Nigerians live on one meal per day, or even less. Security is non-existent in every part of Nigeria. 
I must, I must be frank with you. This country is not sweet. Somebody that eats three square meals in a day finds himself even to eat one. It's very difficult. You see some people that have children, children, one, two, they will be afraid to put more children because what they are saying is too much for them. People that they say they are working, little work they are doing, that they are paying them. You find out that the little money they are paying them before, like me, we are working. Before they pay that money, <laughs> it has finished because we have this uh, pattern of salary advance. Salary advance, the children fall sick, no food in the house, blah, blah. You pay house rent, you pay for Nepal, you pay for water. So to me, the, con the situation of this country is under God's control. The question is this, can Nigeria or Nigerians survive another 14 months under the leadership of Buhari? You are given a trade right, meaning one person should control all the business in Nigeria to Dangote. The same cement they are selling in Ghana, they are selling in, uh, in, in Kenya, they are selling in, in, in the Republic, in Togo, the same cement they are selling here, but the price of Nigeria is higher. Why? You have seen it. Do I have more to show to you? There is nothing more to show people. People who are sensible, who are using their common sense, should know better that the only solution remains a breakup. That is the obvious difference between us and those of them who are calling themselves one Nigerianist, who still believe on something that they know is impossible. People who are still living in their dreams. We are living in reality. Our Supreme Amazon Nandekano is living in reality. That is why only him and him alone have provided a solution to the issue of Nigeria, which is referendum. Self-determination for every people. Referendum. Every indigenous tribe go their separate ways. Mazen Nandekano never called for war. He called for self-determination through a referendum. Mazen Nandekano have never killed anybody. Mazen Nandekano have never declared war on anybody. Mazen Nandekano have never declared Biafra at any time. Mazen Nandekano is asking for a self-determination through a referendum, asking the Janja with government to conduct a referendum. That was why they went to kidnap him in Kenya. They kidnapped him in Kenya because Mazen Nandekano preached a message that woke up everybody that is sleeping in that country called Nigeria. Mazen Nandekano woke up the Biafran people. He woke up the Drua people. He woke up the Middle Betas. He woke up every indigenous tribe. And today, every indigenous tribe is asking for self-determination through referendum. That is why they couldn't hold it. The only man they will hear his voice and the Shiva. The only man they will hear his voice, Asura will be the wrong hater scatter. The only man they will hear his voice, their media will shut down. Today, they went to Kenya and kidnapped him. Damn all consequences and send it to Nigeria through extraordinary edition. Today, Mazin Nandekano is facing torture, facing torture in DSS. And we are calling for his unconditional release. And some people say it is not the right thing to do. Let me tell you if you are human, if you are human, you care about yourself and your born children, you have to embark on a massive civil disobedience to make sure that Mazin Nandekano is going to release. Massive civil disobedience. Sit at home on Sunday, on Monday, until Mazen Nandekano is being released. Not only sit at home, every other thing you can add to it to make sure that Mazen Nandekano is being released, this is the time to do it before he goes to court. This is the time to begin to go for it, for it before he goes to court. Economic sanction to the Janjaweed government in Nigeria, we will impose it. Stop giving your revenue to them. Whatever contribution you are making to the local government, to the state government, to the federal government, in Biafra land, stop paying to them. Keep that money to yourself. It will be useful in time to come. They are using the money you are paying them to bring in the Janjaweed to kill you. You have seen. They can't even proscribe the people who are killing their own people over there. They can't proscribe people who are killing, although they are killing the indigenous people in the north. They have sacrificed the northern part of Nigeria to the terrorists. They handed it over to full terrorists and they are running their affairs there. They are busy killing us in Biafra land. They are busy killing us in Biafra land. Even as we speak, they are still killing us. Their full men are still killing us in Biafra land. Nobody is doing anything. They have grown wings because Mazen Nandekar is in captivity. And they grow more wings because you and I are doing, not doing what you are supposed to do. Those who are supposed to speak of Mazen Nandekar are not speaking up for him. Those who are supposed to fit into the shoe of Mazen Nandekar and continue from the foundation of Mazen Nandekar have led, they have rejected Mazen Nandekar. People who are supposed to be voicing out, speak the tone of Mazen Nandekano, stand on consistency and justice. They have refused to do so. What a shame. What a shame. But the time has come that Chukwok Gabiama have risen. Chukwok Gabiama have risen and have raised people by his own self to install back 
that which Mazin Nandi can have established. Chukwoku Kabiyama by himself, watch and see. Watch and see. It is already unfolding. Some of you who are very innocent, some of you who are very sincere to themselves, some of you who are very sincere themselves and following activities that are happening. If you have not watched the videos that our brother Simon Ekpa have made day before yesterday and yesterday, go and watch those videos. Go and watch the brokers of, my, of our, our brother Simon Epa day before yesterday and yesterday. Watch the two brokers here met. Then you will come back and know where you have to follow and know where you stand. Then you will, re, you will touch your brain and know what to do. Dear friends, you have to wake up. You have to wake up. And for those who are still claiming, those who are still pretending that it's so well, it is not well anyway. All those people from the middle bed, from Odudua land, from uh, any part of that contract, so, for, so long you are an indigenous person and you are still pretending that Nigeria is going to be good. All the activists in Nigeria still pretending of a better Nigeria. You are deceiving yourself. There will be no better Nigeria anywhere. And before I go, I have to prove that to you by showing you what a, a senator in the Senate said until they do that. But as it stands, that can never happen. They're not ready to do it. Until they do that, throw away the constitution, Nigeria will never know peace. Nigeria will never know progress. Nigeria will never know success. That is the obvious truth. Deny it for all I care is the truth. I want to remind you of it again. Listen carefully. It's a message from an elderly man in the Senate. Watch. When a nation or republic cannot keep faith with justice and with the truth, it will never achieve unity. It will never achieve peace. And it will never achieve progress. Mr. President, sir, one of us quoted from this constitution and went ahead to make prescription for how to move forward. I dare to tell this nation today that this is the problem. This constitution can never give us progress. This constitution can never give us peace. This constitution can never give us unity. And unfortunately, most of us in this National Assembly we don't have the spine to face what we need to give this republic to have peace and progress. What do I mean? This constitution has 68 items, 68 on the exclusive list. This constitution has only 12 on the concurrent list. And those 12 are written so nebulously, so fraudulently, that you know that the intention is to even undermine those concurrent lists. That is why those who want unity and peace in Nigeria must first remember that the name of our republic is not just Nigeria. The formal name of this republic is Federal Republic of Nigeria. Unfortunately, we don't run a federalist system in Nigeria. Otherwise, what is so unique about all those things that are in the exclusive list? We used to have a parliamentary system. And then we wanted unity. We wanted peace. We wanted progress, and we therefore said we are going to go with a presidential system. Honestly, there are many presidential systems in the world that have peace and progress. I can't quarrel with that. But we must put in place the same safeguards that presidential system across the world put in place so that you can have what he needs to run the society. I can't say more than this. You can see 
that the company, British company, that is the most, the company that they are running, the British company can never stand. It can never, it was not established to serve any indigenous tribe. The British company called Nigeria was not established to serve any indigenous tribe. It was not established to serve the Igbos, not to serve the Yorubas, not to serve the Ejos, not to serve the Aousas, not to serve the Efik, not to serve the Calabar, not to serve the, the, the Kanuri people. It was established to serve only the British purpose through the full and Jaweed. Only to serve British people through the full and Jaweed. And because full and Jaweed have been empowered by the company called Nigeria, they can never ever change anything in that constitution. They will never mention it at any time. You see why you have to wake up. If you are sleeping, wake up. Because those of you who, who call themselves activists, who are still believing that Nigeria will be better anytime, there will be no better Nigeria anywhere. Begin to go to your zoo. If you're a Biafran, fight with the Biafran people. If you're Odudua, fight with the Odudua people. If you're a Middle Better, fight with the Better people. Even if you're in the North, fight with your fellow Northerners to rescue your area. That is the right thing to do. I think I have to stop here. Me Chukwo be my guide and protect everybody that have watched this video from beginning to the end. Everybody that has shared the video, every hand that has shared the video, I say Chukwo Kukabia will going to guide you and protect you. Every single person has joined this video from beginning to the end, up to the minute, Chukwo Kukabia will prosper you. You will walk into Biafra alive. You will see the end of 2022. 2022 will never see your end. Every hand that has shared this video and watched the end, if you are in Biafra land, your life will be spared. If you are in Biafra land, you will never see death. The killer headers will never see you. The killer danger will never see you. Everybody have watched this video. If you are an Oduduan, Chukwo Kukabiyama will prosper you and keep you to see Oduduan. If you are a middle better, Chukwo Kukabiyama will keep you and make you to see a middle better republic. If you are a Biafran, Chukwo Kukabiyama will keep you to walk into Biafra alive. Every single person who has shared this video to their platform, who has spread this message for people to hear, Chukwo Kukabiyama will prosper you and bless you. The Chukwo Kukabiyama guide and protect everybody that is genuinely fighting for the freedom of their own people. It doesn't matter your religion. It doesn't matter your tribe. It doesn't matter your location. As long as you are genuinely fighting for the freedom of your people, Chukwo Kukabiyama will prosper you and guide you. May Chukwo Kukabiyama guide and protect Sunday Bowo. Wherever Sunday Bowo is at this material hour, Chukwo Kukabiyama will prosper Sunday Bowo, secure him and release him so that he will come out and continue the struggle and lead his people into victory. May Chukwo Kukabiyama continue to guide and protect our Sudan Mazen and Kano. Wherever our Sudan Mazen and Kano is at this material hour, may Chukwo Kukabiyama continue to strengthen him, give him more strength, equip him with more strength and wisdom and knowledge. May Chukwo Kukabiyama grant Mazen and Kano more wisdom wherever he is. Prosper him and secure him. Wherever Mazen and Kano is, every poison that has been injected into the body of Mazen and Kano, Chukwo Kukabiyama will send doctors spiritually to pull it out. Every poison that they have given Mazen and Kano the one they injected in his body, the one he has eaten in his mouth, Chukwu Kukabiyama will neutralize it. They will never have any effect. No weapon formed or fashioned against Mazen Nandekano shall prosper. No weapon formed or fashioned against any Biafran shall prosper. No weapon formed or fashioned against any genuine freedom fighter shall prosper. But those of them who call themselves betrayers, those of them who are selling their people, those who are selling their people and causing hindrances to our freedom, 2022 will see their end. 2022 will see their end. If you are one of those who is empowering to see that Biafran do not have their freedom, to see that indigenous people in the country of Nigeria do not have their freedom, if you are the one fighting against freedom, 2022 will be your end as you're watching this video. As you're watching this video and you are standing against the truth, standing against that which is right, 2022 will see your end. And for those who are good, who are righteous, following the truth. Mazen Nandekano say, follow the truth. It doesn't matter where it leads you to. Even if the truth leads you to disobey your leader, follow it. If the truth leads you to obey, disobey your mother or your father, follow it because the truth himself is Chukwu Kukabiyama. And Chukwu Kukabiyama has the final say. Follow the truth and pursue it with all your strength. Thank you so much for watching wherever you're watching from. And remember, bless. they will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Piafra will surely come. Thank you for watching. Remember blessed and stay blessed. I will see you again tomorrow by the special grace of Chukwu Thank you.